Hello friends. For today's video, I wanted to go through a list of some fantasy romance books that are not Sarah J Maas or Jennifer L. Armentrout. I know for a lot of people when they're looking to get into a certain genre, there will be staples, specific authors that get mentioned all the time. And it can be actually kind of frustrating because you're like, yeah, I know about those ones, but what about some others? So that's what I wanted to go through today. I'm going to go in order of basically spice level. So the first few are going to be a little bit lighter where nothing's really explicitly stated and sometimes you don't even actually get any spicy scenes. It's just about the cuteness, the relationship building. From there we'll have ones that are a little bit more of a mix and then at the end we'll have ones that yes there's still a story. None of the ones I'm mentioning are smut. They're all fantasy romance but the saucier scenes are definitely much spicier. Before jumping into it, a big thank you to GlassUSA.com for working with me on today's video. They do have a deal that is available to all of you for the next 24 hours. I'll have that linked in the description bar down below, but since we're talking about things that have to do with love today, I thought I'd show some of my favorite glasses that I've had as of late. So for one, this pair of glasses that I'm basically always wearing, no surprise, I love this pair of glasses. That is why I wear it all the time. <laughs> and I have a lot of pairs of glasses because I've been working with glassusa.com for years and I was using their service before I was working with them. So I have a lot of lenses from them, a lot of frames, but this particular pair is the one that always is a winner for me. I just love that it's clear, it goes with everything. I love the size, I love the shape, but I do have a couple pairs of sunglasses I've been loving as well because that's where I feel like I have a lot of fun varying it up. So I'll start with this one particular pair that it has a little bit of a cat eye shape to it, which I just think is so fun. And I just think that they look very classy, very chic. And then another pair that I've gotten as of late would be this pair of aviators. I just think aviators are the coolest kinds of glasses, the coolest kind of sunglasses. And if I was one of these cool guy love interests in a lot of the books that I'll be talking about, I feel like I'd probably be wearing these. But if you have never tried GlassUSA.com out before, they do have a try on feature. All you have to do is have a webcam and you can move around and it will show you what the glasses would look like on you in real time. They also have it so that you can get prescription glasses or prescription sunglasses. They have blue light blocking lenses. They have a little bit of everything and they are much more affordable because they deliver directly to you. So they take the middleman out of the equation. But like I said, there is a really great deal if you are interested in checking them out. So I'll have that linked. A big thank you to them again for working with me. Now on to today's video. Starting at the beginning with the ones that are a little bit on the lighter side, we have the book Half a Soul. This is actually a series of standalones, which is pretty popular with romance and fantasy romance books. And with it, it means you don't have to read them necessarily in order, but I would recommend with this series that if you wanna catch the little Easter eggs within the other books, that you do wanna start with Half a Soul. The setup for this one is we follow a young woman who had half of her soul, as the title implies, taken by a magical being, and it has left her without some of her emotions. Or a better way to put it is that she has those emotions, but it's almost as if they've been muted. She never seems to react the way society expects her to react. And this is part of a set of Regency fairy tales. So you can imagine with this particular time period, how you behave, how you react to things, your expressions are picked apart by other members of society. Everybody is very obsessed with what's proper, how you're supposed to do things, and so our main character just does not fit the norm. But this actually catches the attention of this particular character who is a magician, and he is being sought after by our main character's cousin because the cousin thinks, well, my poor cousin, the main character, I just feel so bad for her because of what's happened and maybe this magician can cure her. And so you see these two characters interacting and the love interest does find that he appreciates that she doesn't do everything as expected, that she doesn't just fit into this perfect way of being and the, the mold of how you're supposed to act. She kind of goes against that and he sees a little of himself in that too because everybody sees him as rough around the edges. They tolerate him because of what he's capable of, but he has seen some things in a war that has occurred and it's kind of made him look at the world differently and look at higher society a little differently. So to find somebody that's almost like a kindred spirit 
uh, it's really meaningful to him. And so the relationship building is just absolutely adorable. And the story is so whimsical and sweet and charming. And I just really enjoyed those two. Plus it's the, in some ways it's almost like Sunshine Grump. And I know this is going to be cheesy, but it's almost like, <laughs> it's almost like Moonlight Grump because of the fact that she's not super bright and over the top. It's more of like just her personality. She's still sweet, but she's not grumpy the way he is. So it's like a, a twist on the Sunshine Grump a little, a little bit. After that, we have This Vicious Grace. This one has a little bit of the Sunshine Grump, but also it has the bodyguard trope. So the setup for the story is we follow a young woman who is very important to her society as she is supposed to be the individual whose magic can amplify her eventual spouse's magic. And in doing this, she is going to be able to keep their country safe from this threat of almost like this demonic force that is eventually going to come. However, our main character's power is so strong that the people that she has been wed to thus far, when she touches them to amplify their magic, she ends up killing them. And so she's killed a number of people at this point. She feels awful. And now, even though she has almost religious significance within her society, people are wondering, is she the wrong chosen one, you could say? So some people are determined to protect her, they value her, and then other people are wondering, if she is the wrong one, do we need to take her out so that we can put the rightful person on in her place? And they have legitimate reasons for wondering this because if she isn't the right person, then when the potential apocalyptic event occurs, it's possible that they're all gonna die. And so she recognizes, oh my gosh, people are gonna start trying to kill me. I need to get a bodyguard. I need somebody I can trust. And then the bodyguard enters the picture. And there's a lot to do with her character just feeling miserable about the fact that she's killed some people, but also the relationship building between her and her bodyguard, I really enjoyed. I liked the way that they made each other, I think, better people. They looked at the world differently. And then also there's some really sweet friendships that come about in the story. There's also some twists and turns that I really liked. It is young adult, so uh, I mentioned at the beginning, this is gonna be going in somewhat order of spice level. Those first two, definitely on the lighter side. And I would say more so the sweet side and less of the spicy side. So after that, we have one that's more so in the middle, still incredibly sweet, a warm hug of a book, but there's a little bit of mix of spice too. And that would be one of my favorites, The Very Secret Society of Irregular Witches, which follows a young woman who is a witch living in modern times in her own world. However, she is not known to be a witch to the rest of the world. And she kind of has to keep this a secret, but she definitely feels like she doesn't have a sense of belonging. She doesn't really have a home. She doesn't have a family. She feels very, very isolated. And then one day she is hired to teach some orphaned witches how to use their powers and their little girls and they all have their own personalities and and one of them is like super super sweet and one of them's like protective of the rest so she's very suspicious of everyone and they're just adorable little girls and our main character is just doing her best to try to teach them and they have some people that are looking after them a couple of whom are elderly and they're so cute and then you have the love interest of the story who is very protective of the little girls and just in general, so much about this story is our main character having this found family. If you're a big fa fan of that trope, this book does it so well. And the love interest is, I think, one that as you get to know him, I think the way his backstory revealed is revealed is done really well. And just the way that the two interact is really sweet and this shared love and protectiveness of these little girls. It's just such a cute story. But I do think that when we're looking at the character backstories, there's a lot of depth there as well. After that, we have Paladin's Grace by T. Kingfisher. Another series of standalones. I haven't read the other standalones in this series, but this is the first one. And in this, if you are looking for a story that follows adults who have gone through some stuff as a result of being adults, then Paladin's Grace will be one that you'll probably find really refreshing. Our main character is actually a man. You do get the woman's perspective in this, but, or I should say the love interest, because it's not always a woman, but uh, you do get her perspe perspective as well. And uh, it's just that he's kind of the main focus, which is a little different than what you see with a lot of other fantasy romance or just romance in general. But he was formerly a paladin to a god and then his god died 
And when that happened, the power of the god, it kind of went into his paladins and they're just humans. So they couldn't really uh, control this amount of power. And it did lead some of them to do things that they really couldn't control. And they've had a lot of regret. Some of them are no longer alive as a result of what happened. So the few that are left, they have this shared bond, but also this desire to keep one another from falling into a depression and this feeling of like, oh my gosh, our God is gone. And they're just there for each other. And our main character is just kind of, he's trying to dedicate as much of his time to his brethren, you could say, as he can. But he also needs to make money because he's a human being who lives within a society. And so he is just taking odd jobs as kind of like a bodyguard here and there. And during one of these jobs, he runs into a woman who is a perfumer and she's kind of quirky and eccentric and a little like all over the place, uh, but very endearing. And she is somebody who has gone through a very bad relationship. So she's basically divorced, which you don't really ever see. I, or at least I haven't seen in too many fantasy romance stories. And both of them have things they're passionate about. Both of them have other people who they are caring for or something that makes it so that they can't just devote all of their time to one another, which I think is tied very realistically to their ages because a lot of times the older we get, the more that we have friends or we have family members, people that matter in our lives and that we need to dedicate time toward. And I think that this book captured that really uh, quite well. And also it's T. Kingfisher, so it's funny. I, I think her books are pretty much always funny. The last few are definitely ones that are on the spicier side. But also I want to say these ones are fairly popular in fantasy romance circles. So a lot of you have probably heard about them already. So I'll be a little bit briefer with the synopsis for each of these. First, we have The Serpent and The Wings of Night. The setup for this one is we follow a young woman who is a human living among vampires. I did really like the vampire lore in this story. And she, as a result of being a human, is obviously at a huge disadvantage. And on top of that, she is their prey. So it's very difficult for her to stay alive, but she hates a lot of the vampires because of what they've done to her family, what they do to other humans. And the only person who is really in her life is her adoptive father, who he himself is a vampire, and she no longer wants to rely on him to protect her. She wants strength of her own, and she also wants to help him with his goals for ruling the vampires. And so she enters into this competition, and the winner is supposed to be granted an immense amount of power or a wish by their goddess, basically, the vampire goddess. And I thought the lore with the, the goddess was interesting as well. It is, I would say, going to take a while before the romantic elements kick in. But when they do, I think that as a result of taking time, you know the characters a little bit better. It feels more realistic to see the way in which they start to have feelings for one another. And so I don't want to say too much about the love interest or anything like that, because I figure that's part of the fun of getting into that one, since so much of the first part is just dissecting our main character. We then also have the Bridge Kingdom, Enemies to Lovers, pretty much to the extreme. You follow a young woman since the time that she was young. She has been trained in manipulation, in weaponry, because she will be married to fulfill a marriage alliance to the king of the Bridge Kingdom. And he is fully aware that she is likely going to be spying on behalf of her father and feeding information to him. So Arin is his name. Uh, doesn't really want anything to do with Lara when they're first married. He is very suspicious of her. He does not really care for her at all. And she is trying to get him to trust her because she's like, I need to get this information because she is indeed trying to spy for her father. And eventually he comes to start to trust her a little bit. And then she's starting to realize maybe I don't agree with my father on how things are run. And maybe I've been brainwashed my whole life. And so she's kind of coming to terms with that. But how things uh, go throughout the book, I think, is exciting. I like the development of these characters. And I think that the enemies to lovers trope gets used in marketing all the time now. <laughs> and half the time it's just like when they first met, they had not the greatest impression of each other. And you're like, they're enemies. And you're like, that's not enemies to lovers. That book, The Bridge Kingdom, those are enemies to lovers. Their kingdoms don't get, they, they, it's more than they don't get along. Uh, there's a lot more to it. The politics I thought is, uh, I thought was done well. So if you like political fantasy, 
but you're wanting some romance, I would say the Bridge Kingdom is the right choice. And then after that, I don't really think I even need to say anything. This book is very popular right now, and that would be Fourth Wing, also enemies to lovers. Uh, this one, I, I'm just going to keep it brief. You follow Violet Sorengale, and she is entered into this war college where she is kind of the weakest link, and she's the underdog, and she has to really overcome, but in this war college, they do not want any weakness whatsoever, and so not only is she at an extreme disadvantage because she has a physical, uh, she has something physically that causes her to be injured more easily. She has to push through that where other people do not. She is looked at as weaker, so she has to overcome that. And then also people prey on her through this weakness because they figure if she gets through this war college, her weakness can cause me to die. And so other people are constantly after her and she is trying to get through this war college. And then if she does, she has to try and bond a dragon and bonding a dragon is very rare. And if there's a chance you could bond a dragon and someone else does not, then people are going to be after you all over again. So pretty much the stakes are high all the time. And one of the people that it would seem wants her dead the most is Zayden. And so she's like, oh, this guy. <laughs> that There's more to it than that. But uh, she thinks that this guy wants to kill her. She figures, I hate this guy because his dad is responsible for my brother's death, but he hates her because... Her mom is responsible for his family's death. And so again, actual enemies to lovers. Uh, this book for me is just like pure entertainment. I think of all the ones I've talked about. Um, the rest, I think for me personally, do the relationship building and the dissecting of their themes a little bit better. And I think that the world building is a little bit more fleshed out. Whereas in this one, I think it's just about the fun and the intense stakes and everything moving forward all the time. So it's probably the one that's e the easiest to get through as far as it just makes you want to turn the page all the time. But of the ones I've mentioned today, uh, I, I do think I like a lot of the other ones a lot more. But that one has just taken people off guard. They have loved it. And so a lot of you might end up loving it too. It's very, very popular and it's popular for a reason. But anyway, that's it for some fantasy romance books that are not Sarah J. Mass or Jennifer L. Armentrout. I am planning on pretty soon making a video where I go through a lot of the fantasy romance that I have read and do a tier ranking of them. And then that way you can hear about some other ones as well. And then for those of you who are wanting to maybe try some fantasy romance, but you're not looking to be totally invested fully in the genre yet, you just want to kind of dip your toes and you want to read fantasy that has romantic subplots, I'm planning on doing a recommendations video that's kind of like a, a good starting point to see if that's really going to be a genre you would like. But anyway, let me know your recommendations. Thanks so much for watching. I hope you have a great rest of your day and I'll see you later. Bye.